For this shot, we will heavily change the light and we will also create a beautiful blue orange color palette for this shot using only Lightroom for the editing. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. Right away, I already have cropped the image quite a bit because the upper part is just plain boring. This way we can focus a little more on the mountains. With that out of the way, let's go through the basic panel. What I have in mind for this shot is I want to make it darker and give it way more intense sunset colors. We kind of want to change the light for that. I'm going to start things in the basic panel by bringing down the exposure and this will help making this shot darker, obviously. At the same time, you can see the dark areas of the image are getting a little bit too dark. So we want to counter that by bringing up the shadows and I'm also going to bring up the blacks. Overall, this will lessen the contrast, but I think having a little bit less contrast overall makes this image look much more like a sunset image and it gives everything a softer look, which I quite like for my images. Now, what I'm going to do as well is to bring down the highlights just a little bit like that. This should reveal some more details in those bright rock faces that get hit by the sunlight. Also, to bring back a little bit of contrast, I'm going to raise the whites. Okay, so looking at this program, this is looking like a proper exposure. What I want to do as well is to work on the white balance. I want to warm up this shot quite a bit. So let's raise the temperature because I'm aiming for that intense sunset look. I'm raising the temperature a lot, as you can see, and this will turn these mountains into this glowing yellow color top. Of course, that yellow tone might not look that good, but don't worry about this for now. We are going to change that light and make it look more orange. For now, what I want to do next is to also add a bit of texture, which will give the final details of this image more sharpness. At the same time, I want to introduce a glowing look, so I'm going to bring down the clarity. And let's also bring down the dehaze very gently to improve that glow effect. Then let's bring up the vibrance and we are done with the basic adjustments. So let's compare to before. You can already see we made this image look much, much darker with deeper shadows. Still, we have some nice details in the darker areas, which is important. But for the next step, we want to change the light in this image. And as always, this will easily be done with a bit of masking. One thing you can notice is the sky is very, very bright while the landscape in the foreground is super dark. I want to make the sky on the left side darker because right here is where it's supposed to be darker. While on the right side, that's the side where the light is coming in. So this should stay rather bright. I'm going to set this up by creating a simple sky selection first. And since I don't want the whole sky to be affected, I'm going to subject a linear gradient coming up from the right side like this. So this area will stay bright while the rest of the sky will get darkened. By the way, you can also see the sky selection mask is selecting parts of this mountain. That's not a good selection, but for demonstrating purposes, I think that's okay. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to drop the exposure and just like that, we're making the sky darker. Also, right away, I want to start working on the colors and for the sky, I want to have a rich, deep blue tone. So I'm also going to bring down the temperature, introducing some more blue tones to the sky this way. All right, this is looking much better already, but we can keep on going with that. I'm going to create another sky selection. And again, I want to modify it. Again, I'm subtracting a linear gradient, but this time I'm taking away a bigger part from the right side. So we get this nice fade into the brighter area on the right. And again, I'm just simply bringing down exposure only a tiny bit, thus make the far left side of the image darker. And I want to do this a third time. So let's create another sky selection. Again, I'm subtracting a linear gradient, taking away even more from the right like this. And again, let's bring down the exposure. I want to position this linear gradient a little bit different so we don't get this halo effect around the mountain on the left side, which is a little bit distracting. I want to do that for the mask, for the second mask as well. So we might need to rotate this a bit. One thing we can try as well is to create a color rich mask and let's select the top right here. And then let me intersect this mask with a linear gradient. 
and I'm going to come in from the top left corner like this. And again, I'm just bringing down the exposure. As we bring down the exposure, you will see the saturation of the blue of the sky is changing. It becomes more intense the darker we go. So we want to counter that by bringing down the overall saturation in this area, just to keep a more natural looking blue tone. Wonderful. Then let's also introduce some light coming in from the right side. I'm using a radial gradient for that. I'm going to make it nice and big like this. And let's rotate it a bit to fit the direction of the light. And let's place it somewhere around here. And to create a slight effect, all I'm doing is to, to increase the blacks. I'm also going to increase the whites. And we could bring down the dehaze, which will add a little bit of glow to this area. All right, that's looking gorgeous. Let's use another radial gradient. I'm making it a little bit smaller and I'm specifically targeting the blues of the sky behind the mountain. That also means we are selecting way more than needed, but again, we can click on those two dots, go to intersect mask width and choose color range. And with the color range, I'm clicking right in here in the blue part of the sky. And just like that, we have a perfect selection. Now, what I'm going to do in here is to bring up the whites, which will just brighten up the sky behind the mountain. We could make this radial gradient just a little bit bigger. And let's pull it down a bit. Wonderful. And that's it for the masking already. So let me turn off all the masks so you can see the huge transformation from before to after. Now the image has a lot more depth to it thanks to the additional shadows and the light we have created. At this point we are pretty much done adjusting the light situation but of course we want to also color grade this image. So let's open up the color mixer and I want to start working on the hue by bringing down the yellow hue. What this will do is it will make those yellow mountain faces look more orange because I personally am not a fan of these yellow tones. So that's the simple reason for me to bring it down in the hue tab. Then let's switch over to the saturation. Here I want to further bring down the yellow saturation, leaving more of the orange tones visible right in the mountain faces. So this is looking pretty good. I want to bring up the orange saturation just a bit to counter the previous adjustments. And I'm also going to bring up the blue saturation. All right, nice. Then let's head over into the luminance tab. Here we can work a little more on the contrast between mountains and sky by bringing down the blue luminance. Just like this. And you can see we get this really nice rich blue tone for the sky doing it this way. We could also bring up the orange luminance, which will brighten up the mountains very, very gently. We just need to be careful to not lose any details to clipping in the highlights in these areas. So that's it for the color mixer. I can deactivate it for a moment to see the difference from before. You can see the mountains do look kind of ugly with that yellow color cast to after. Much better and much more neutral. After this, I can go on and get a little more creative with some split toning, adding colors to highlights and shadows. So let's open up the color grading panel. As I said in the beginning, I'm aiming for a very intense sunset image. So I'm going to use the highlights and we're going to add a very rich color to the highlights. Of course, we want to keep it warm. So let's set up the hue to something right here in the orange color range. And I'm going to heavily pump up the saturation. All right, I really love how this looks. I also think the overall brightness of the image could be a little bit lower. So I'm going to make use of that luminance slider and let's bring it down a notch. So the luminance slider for the highlights obviously will only affect the brightness of the highlights. So pulling it down, we will make the highlights darker. Then let's go over into the midtones. Again, I want to use a warm color tone in here. So let's set up the hue. I am going with another orange color like this. And let's bring up the saturation quite a bit as well. Wonderful. Again, I want to try lowering the midtones luminance, making this whole scene a little bit darker this way. It looks much, much better this way. And of course, I want to keep a little bit of color contrast. 
As always, I'm going to use the shadows for that, introducing a cold color tone to the darkest parts of the image. So let's set up the hue right around here. And I'm going to slightly bump up the saturation like this. This is looking lovely. Again, we could make the shadows a little bit darker. We do have some room to play around with, but this is looking really, really good. Now let me turn off the split toning so you can see the difference from before. This is a rather natural looking shot to after. This is the color graded version with some more creative colors added on top. Of course, we can continue in the calibration tab. And as always, what I do for all my images pretty much is to bring down the blue primary hue since it affects the colors in a very, very pleasing way. Wonderful. And I also want to bring up the saturation. All right, and that's it. We're pretty much done. Now the only thing left to do, the sharpening as always in the details tab. Let's do this. I'm going to drop the radius all the way down. Let's increase the details all the way up. And of course, we want to apply masking while holding down the Alt key so we can nicely see which areas of the image get sharpened. So we can target the mountains like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. And that's it. Now there are a bunch of sensor spots we, which we can clean up. So let's click on the remove tool up here. We want to choose the heel brush and click on visualize spots, which makes it easier to see those. I'm going to bring up the slider and then let's go just brush over each of these dots to remove them. And that's it. Here we have the finished image with a completely different light. So I hope this little Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left about the editing process or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.